Hi, I am Greg Enholm. I will be demonstrating the basic max level of the Enholm multiply add cross method for factoring trinomials. If you want a slower pace with more explanation, search for basic max and watch that video first. Let's get going. We start with the quadratic expression here, a times x squared plus bx plus c. What you do with basic max is you start by creating four areas by marking the cross or x. You then place the multiplication symbol in the top area and the, the addition symbol in the bottom area. We multiply a times c to fill in the top area. Since a is 1, it'll just be c, 24. Then we bring down the b to the lower area, which becomes 14. Now we must create the side factors, where you multiply 1 times 24, and always start with 1 here, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Well, at this point, if you want to be very thorough, you say 1 plus 24 does not equal 14. 2 plus 12, whoops, we're done. So you circle the 2, you circle the 12, indicating that they give 14. At this point, you basically have the answer. You have x plus 2 times x plus 12. Now, if you want to check, the way that you would check is to use FOIL. FOIL allows you to multiply binomials, which is what we have here, F-O-I-L. The first here is x times x, or x squared. The outer is x times 12, or 12x. The inner is 2x and the last is 24. Now we know that 12x plus 2x is 14x. So this is identical to what we started with and we have checked our answer. Now we have another problem. x squared plus 20x plus 36. Let's just do it. a is 1, c is 36. 36. You bring down the 20. 20. Then you do the side factors for 36. 1, 36. 2, 18. 3, 12. 4, 9. At this point, what you realize is that we're done. The next factor would be 6 and 6, and we're complete. So what we want to do here is find out which of these two factors adds up to 20. Now you can be mechanical about this and do 1 plus 36 isn't 20, but you can immediately see that 2 and 18 are the two factors that add to 20. You're done. You don't even have to finish doing the 3, 4, and 6 if you notice that right away. Here we get x plus 2 times x plus 18. Again, let's check to see if that's correct. FOIL get lots of practice with FOIL using max. x squared, 18x, 2x, and 36. Well, 18x plus 2 is very clearly 20x. So, we've proved, once again, max has produced the correct factors. Okay, let's go with another problem. The only thing that's changed here is we previously had 20 and now we have 13. This gives us an opportunity to point out something that's important that I mentioned before. a times c, a is still 1, so it's just c. Then you bring down b, which is 13. Then you start doing the side factors. But as you do the side factors, if you pay some attention to what you're writing down, you can all of a sudden realize, wait a minute, I'm done here. You don't have to keep going you find that 4 and 9 add to 13 and you found your factors. You just need to wrap up, write down the two binomials 
And then if you want, you can use foil. I'm going to skip foil here because it's very obvious that 4X and 9X add up to 13. Okay, at this point, we're starting to use negatives. And we're basically moving from the introductory level of examples to the exploratory level. So let's see what happens when we add a negative here. X squared plus 2X minus 3. Well, we still do A times C. C is now a negative, negative 3. We bring down the 2, as always, as B. Now we have 1 and 3 as side factors. Well, we're done. There are no more factors. But 1 plus 3 does not equal 2. Are we lost? No. We just have to think a minute. 1 times 3 also doesn't equal negative 3. What do we have to do? Put a negative on one or the other. Well, it only takes a moment to realize what should be negative. Over here, if we make negative 3, this would have to be a negative number. So we just leave 3 as it is and make it negative 1. That's our two factors. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. We can go right to our answer. X minus 1, X plus 3. Now, let's use FOIL here to check this out. F-O-I-L. X times X, X squared. X times 3, 3X three for the outer. Whoops, I put a plus there. Shouldn't. It's a minus. Minus X, minus 3. Okay, now let's take a look here. 3x minus x gives us 2x. We already have the other two terms. So, once again, Max was able to handle a problem of a negative just like that. Let's keep going. Here we have a larger negative number for c. So let's just get going. Because a is 1, we just put negative 12. We bring the 11 straight down. Again, you do the side factors. 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, 4. Now, notice I didn't put any negatives on the side factors. That's a very bad idea. If you watch other online videos, they start trying to put the negatives in right away, and that just doesn't work out very well. You also, however, could remember back to saying, well, wait a minute, why did we go past 1 and 12? because 1 minus 12 will give us 11. So what would happen here is we have 1 minus 12 will give us actually negative 11. We want positive 11. So we know that we need negative 1 here and 12 here to assure that we get 11. And of course, negative 1 times 12 gives us negative 12. The framework's all set. We're ready to write our answer down x minus 1 times x plus 12. Again, let's use FOIL just to make sure that we haven't missed something here. F-O-I-L gives us first x squared, then positive 12x, negative x, minus 12. Well, again, 12x minus x gives us 11x, and we have our negative 12 We've checked it. It's correct. Okay, let's just go off to the side for a minute and show you that Max is capable of handling all sorts of trinomials, even ones that don't initially look like trinomials. You're more used to seeing this problem, x squared plus 0x minus 25, as x squared minus 25, and you apply the differences of squares. However, I want to let you know that Max can factor any trinomial. So, when you look at this, you would say A is still 1, C is negative 25, so we put negative 25 here. Whoops, left the 11 in, got to get rid of that. And we bring down the 0 to be 11 instead of the 11. So at this point, what we will do is factor 25. Well, that's easy. 1 and 25, and as I urge, always start with 1 here. Then 5 and 5. Again, do not put the negatives in until you have all the factors and you're looking with the, comparing it to the B term. Well, at this point, clearly it doesn't matter which 5 is negative. 
So I'll just pick this one off to the side. 5 times negative 5 will give us negative 25. 5 plus negative 5 gives us 0. x plus 5 times x minus 5. And of course, the reverse is also true. I'm not going to bother to foil that out because that's obvious. Let's keep going. OK. Now, let's make the b coefficient negative and see what happens. Again, a times c, 1 times 16 will be 16. We bring down the b as always. Now it's negative, negative 17. Well, at this point, you can think back, all right, always start with 1. Well, here's an example of why always starting with 1 makes a lot of sense. Because the side factors here are 1 and 16, and you can immediately be suspicious that 1 and 16 can give you 17. Why bother to keep going? So what you can do here is think about this for a moment. We need 16 up here, so either both of these are positive or both of them are negative. Well, clearly, they both have to be negative. Negative, negative. That creates a situation where negative 1 times negative 16 gives us positive 16, which is a times c. And at the same time, negative 1 plus negative 16 gives us negative 17. I'll put the answer down here, but I'm not going to bother to put it out as a FOIL problem because, again, you can just look at it and see x times x is x squared, which we have up there. Then the outer term is negative 16x. The inner term is negative 1x. That gives us negative 17x. And negative 1 times negative 16 gives us c. We're done. Let's try an example that keeps the same c as before, but gives us a different b and shows that you have to do a little more work here. Again, a times c is 16. You bring down now negative 10. You start always with 1, 1 and 16. And then let's do 2 and 8. Oop, we could keep going here. There's not much further to go. But why bother? We see 2 and 8. We know that'll add to negative 10 if we put a negative in front of the 2 and a negative in front of the 8. And you can always just double check. Negative 2 times negative 8 gives us 16. Negative 2 plus negative 8 gives us negative 10. We're done. Circle your factors so you make sure that you bring down what's correct. x minus 2 times x minus 8. Again, FOIL, x times x, the first term right here, x squared. The outer term, negative 8x plus the inner term, negative 2x, gives us negative 10x. And as we just said above, negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. We're done. OK, here's another example where we're just changing b. We're keeping c the same. And we'll show a little trick in just a minute. Let's work this problem out again quickly. This will be 16. This will be 14 with a negative sign in front of it. Then we have our side factors, 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 3, whoops, not 3, 4, 4 and 4. Well, at this point, what's happening? Well, we're stuck. Wait a minute. I thought we could factor trinomials. Well, not all trinomials can be factored. You've probably heard of prime polynomials. That is, a polynomial where it can only be divided by itself in one. And they don't come with labels on them saying they're prime polynomials. I thought we were going to be able to factor this trinomial. Well, Max can factor all trinomials which can be factored. It's very important to realize is not all trinomials can be factored. And here's where Max is really strong. In this situation, we can use the Max framework to prove that this polynomial is not factorable or a prime polynomial. A prime polynomial is like a prime number. A prime number, like 7, can only be divided by 1 and itself, 7. That's true of a prime polynomial also. A prime polynomial can only be divided by itself and the polynomial. So how can we show that using the MAX framework? Well, over here, we can show 
that if you take negative 1 plus negative 16, you get negative 17, which is not equal to negative 14. So we've shown our first set of factors doesn't work. Negative 2 minus negative 8, that's negative 10, which does not equal negative 14. And our last set, negative 4, negative 4, does not equal negative 14. Now if you want to be thorough about this, you can say that 1 plus 16 doesn't equal negative 14, but that's not even a negative number, so that's not even close. So if we just stick with the negatives, we don't get there. So what you write is not factorable and or prime polynomial. So you can see that max not only works when you're actually factoring something which is factorable, max also works when you are factoring something which turns out not to be factorable and you can prove it. That's a complete introduction to basic max. Search the internet for future videos for intermediate max and advanced max.